Hi artists, today Lucy and I will teach you about a very famous American artist named Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock's full name is Paul Jackson Pollock, but he was known professionally as Jackson Pollock. Kind of like how a lot of my students in art class go by their middle name. Jackson Pollock also went by his middle name. He was a very important artist. Pollock became very famous for his enormous drip paintings. Jackson Pollock was born in the state of Wyoming. He was the youngest of five brothers and his mother encouraged her sons to become artists. And guess what? Three of them did. While he was growing up, Pollock's family moved all over the American West. Sadly, Jackson Pollock wasn't a very good student at school. He actually got in a lot of trouble and he had a hard time following directions. When he was 18 years old, Pollock decided to move to New York City to become an artist. Jackson Pollock painted where he could lay his canvas on the floor and drip and splatter paint across it without worrying about ruining the walls or the floor. In the words of Jackson Pollock himself, My painting is direct. I usually paint on the floor. I enjoy working on a large canvas. I feel more at home, more at ease in a big area. Having the canvas on the floor, I feel nearer, more of a part of the painting. Sometimes I use a brush, but often prefer using a stick. Sometimes I pour the paint straight out of the can. I like to use a dripping fluid paint. A method of painting is the natural growth out of a need. I want to express my feelings rather than illustrate them. Technique is just a means of arriving at a statement. My painting does not come from the easel. I prefer to tack the unstretched canvas to the hard wall or the floor. I need the resistance of a hard surface. On the floor, I am more at ease. I feel nearer, more part of the painting, since this way I can walk around it, work from the four sides, and literally be in the painting. Jackson Pollock felt driven to express his emotions through his painting. Rather than painting a landscape or a portrait, Pollock wanted to paint action. When you look at one of his strip paintings, your eye wanders across the entire canvas in constant motion. In this way, Pollock achieved his goal. The creation of the painting was active, and so is the viewing of the painting. He used flinging, dripping, pouring, and splattering techniques and use the movements of his whole body can, to control the flow of the paint. During his lifetime, Jackson Pollock considered, enjoyed considerable fame and was a major artist of his generation. Hi artists, today we will be creating a Jackson Pollock inspired art piece. Here is Miss Schumacher's finished piece. The very first thing that I would like for you to do today is in the center of your table, please take a pencil. Once you get your pencil, and here is Miss Schumacher's pencil, please write your first name on your paper. You can write it anywhere on your paper. Go ahead and write your first name on your paper. After you write your first name, 
flip the black piece of paper over. Then put your pencil back in the center of your table. Put your pencil back in the center of your table. So your name is on the back of our paper. Today, you will notice that there are three different colors of paint on your table. These colors may be different than the colors that Ms. Schumacher has. Inside each of the paints, there are pieces of yarn in each of the paints. What we are going to be doing today is we will be using the yarn to lay on our black paper to create a Jackson Pollock inspired art piece. The very first thing I need you to do is inside the middle of your bucket, you have a cup filled with clothespins. Please get one clothespin. Everyone should have one clothespin. Now, we need to be very gentle with these clothespins because they actually break very easily. As you can see, this bottom part right here, if you press it, the clothespin will open and then close. So if you press this part, it opens and close. We are going to be using this clothespin today to grab the yarn and to lay it on our paper. So go ahead and I want you to put your clothespin down on, on the side of your paper like this. I want everyone to put their clothespin down on the side of their paper. You are not going to touch it until Miss Schumacher says so. Miss Schumacher wants to first show you an example of how we are going to do today's project. So I should see everyone with their clothes pinned to the side until Miss Schumacher says the word hot dog. When I say the word hot dog, that's when you can touch the clothes pin again. So right now, Miss Schumacher is just going to show you an example. What you're going to do in just a second is you will choose a color of paint. Now, you will have to take turns with your neighbors. Maybe one of your neighbor is using the color that you want, but you need to wait until they are finished. There are two yarns in every color, so two people can use every color at once, okay? But let's say three people want to use the white paint, then the, the third person is just going to have to wait until someone is done. You are going to squeeze the clothespin so it's open, like this, to, and then you're going to put it on top of the yarn, and then it's going to grab onto the yarn, okay? Like that, so here's my yarn from my paint. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't wanna squeeze this again. I want it to hold the yarn. You are going to just let it lay down on your paper and then you'll pick it up and then you can lay it down somewhere else. And every time you lay down the yarn on your paper, it will fall a different way. Okay, so go like this, and so on and so forth. So now what I want you to do is I want you to notice how Miss Schumacher is kind of going all around her paper, okay? Laying the yarn. Now let's say I want to use a different color. If the other colors are available, if my friends are not using them, all you have to do is drop the clothespin and 
press it so the yarn comes off of the clothespin and then you choose your next color and again you press the clothespin so it opens you put it on the yarn and then again you just let the yarn fall naturally down and you lift it back up you let it fall again lift it back up fall again lift it back on now let's say I'm gonna undo that I dropped that one let's say I want to use the blue now I get my blue paint I see none of my friends were using it I find it with my clothespin and again I just let it fall I lift it back up I let it fall and I lift it back up okay so now we are going to do our Jackson Pollock piece together your clothespin was on the side of your paper. Now I'm gonna say our word, hot dog. Go ahead and take your clothespin. Go ahead and decide on the first color that you would like. Again, if one of your friends is using that color, you're just going to have to wait or go ahead and choose a color that is available. Go ahead and press on your clothespin so it opens. Choose the yarn color that you want and go ahead and begin laying it down on your paper. You will see every time the yarn kind of falls a little bit differently. Oops, I lost my yarn here. And that will kind of create that Jackson Pollock inspired piece. So go ahead and work with the first color we're all going to use the three colors on the table unless you prefer just to use one or two. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm dropping this all over my paper. And it's creating a very drip artifact. I don't have any paint on my fingers because I'm holding the clothespin and I'm not putting my hands in the paint. Okay, now I look at my art piece and I have enough of my first color everywhere. So, what I would like for everyone to do is wrap up using their first color. Go ahead and maybe do a few more markings. And then I would like you to put the yarn back on the plate of the first color that you chose. So go ahead and put the yarn back on the plate of the first color you chose to use today. Now, I would like you to choose a second color to use. Again, you may have to share and take turns with the friends at your table. Go ahead and with your second color, take your clothespin and catch on to the yarn. Go ahead and grab the yarn. So now you have your second color and go ahead and begin laying the yarn down gently on your paper with the second color. Oops, I lost my yarn, but I can just grab it again. Oops, I lost it again. So I'm just laying down my second color. In this case, my second color is the red. I'm trying to lay it down on the edges all over my paper here. So right now, we're using the second color. If you're finished, just wait for the rest of us to catch up. So you're using that second color, you're laying it all over your paper, and wow, look, it's already looking like a Jackson Pollock art piece. Amazing how well yarn and paint works together. Alrighty, friends, now you need to put the yarn back on the second color of paint. 
And now you need to use the last color on your table, the third color. So go ahead and grab that color. You're gonna go ahead and grab it with your clothespin. Again, you may have to wait and share with your neighbor. And then go ahead and lay on the third color. So you're laying on the third color all around on your paper. Make sure to get up in the corners and maybe places that look like a little more empty. So we're going to use our third color. And we're dragging the yarn, we're laying it, we're placing it. Some of the colors are mixing together and that's okay. Go ahead and wrap up using that third color. If you're done, just wait for us to finish up. Now I would like you to take the clothespin and drop the yarn back on that third color. 